Hi, I'm Dibley, the owner of Dibs Yard Shunting Layout, and in this video I'm going to show you how I prepare and assemble my working point levers. So first of all, let's take a look at what is in the kit. So inside the bag is a little label which has the link to the instructions and it also says the type of point levers we've got. There is a 2mm pivot rod, there is uh, an ABS crank lever and a non-ABS crank lever, um, at least one of each. There is a base, there is a top cover and there is a wire lever. Let's see what tools are needed. You may want a little scrap of wood uh, for drilling through so you don't damage your mat. You want a 1mm drill, a 2mm drill, you probably want a pin vise to hold the drill, you want a small junior hacksaw blade, you want a half round needle file, you want some medium fine paper, 240 grit maybe, and some coarse paper, 80 grit. So let's see what we need to do to prepare the kit. So let's open a bag and uh, get started. out of the way. Right, so what we've got here, as you can see we've got four of the little crank levers here, two of them will be ABS and two of them will be non-ABS. Um, we've got the, right, we're going to put the two mil drill in the little pin vise because we are going to, well, I'm going to try and get this in here, there we go, that's better. First thing we're going to do is we are going to, we we'll just probably use one of these, we're going to open out the 2 mil hole in the heel of the crank. So it has been, it is printed with a 2 mil hole but the resin tends to fill it up so you don't really need to do much more than just sort of clear through it really. Make sure it's fully through, get rid of any uh, sort of. We're now going to go in the toe, the 2 mil hole in the toe, just the same again, just drill through. Be careful not to split these, these if you are a bit heavy handed with these, you can split them. Um, this is why I supply a couple of them. Right, we need to do clear drill through the uh, two mil holes in three places on the lid. So we'll just uh, drill through here. Again, these are these are actually should they are in the uh, model itself. It's just that they fill up with resin um, when I print them. So that's one of them. We need to do the other two now. This two at this end, they locate over two little sp spigots in the base. The um, the single hole at the other end is what the little brass pivot goes through. Uh, just do the last one now. I was originally going to sell these already pre-prepared, but it takes so long. I'd have to sell them at a stupid price, so um, that's why I decided to sell them as a kit. Right, we're going to do the 2 mil hole, we're going to drill through the 2 mil hole on the base. This is where the little brass um, pivot rod will go through. That's those all done. So next, we are going to clear, there's a little slot on there, we're going to use the junior hacksaw blade just to clear through. Again, it is in the model, it's just that um, it does fill up with resin. Now you can see I'm just putting a bit of an undercut and an overcut on it just to allow the actual lever when it comes through to, to clear. Um, you might find if, if um, the operation of the lever is a bit stiff you might just need to take that a little bit further. Right, we're on to the one mil drill now, which is not fiddly at all, honestly. Throw it in there, hope for the best. Right, we're now going to do the uh, the single one mil hole on the cr uh, one mil hole in the crank. Um, so we just need to clear that through. Now be very careful now. Very easy to uh, snap the one mil drills. If you push down too much, just let the drill do the work rather than trying to force it through. There we go. We're all the way through. Just make sure it's a good clear hole. Lovely jubbly. Right now we're going to do a little bit of uh, a little bit of milling along the the plane, the length plane of it. So in that one mil hole, we're going to be a bit naughty. Rather than just drilling, we're now just going to angle it in, in the uh, along the length, just to turn this into a slight slot. Uh, because when the lever goes through, you can see it needs to be able to move for an angle. That was slightly exaggerated, but we do need we do need it to be able to move slightly. We're going to drill through the one mil hole in the top now. Um, and we're also going to do the same again. We will, once we've drilled through, we will need to overlies this hole in the same plane as the length of the uh, of the top or the planks on the top. 
the planks don't always show depending on how, how well the resin is. Um, these have come out, this black resin is really nice and it's come out quite well. The grey resin I had before um, didn't always show the planks very well. It's kind of, I don't know, it's, it's a bit strange really. I'm probably still learning a little bit with the uh, with using the resins. Right, I'm through just about. Okay, yeah, this one's filled up with resin quite a lot, so it's been a bit of a pain to drill this one. So once we're through and we're clear, and then you can see that I'm starting to wiggle it backwards and forwards along the plane of the lid. So in the same direction as the planks and the grain will go. I'm just turning it into a very slightly oval hole, just so when the uh, the little lever wire goes down through it, it can oscillate backwards and forwards without any problem. Again, if you find that the operation of the uh, lever is a bit stiff or restricted, you may need to open this out again. Next we get the half, found, half round needle file and use the flat side against the shoulders on the base. Uh, these shoulders are where the sleepers on the pico point would go up against, so we need to make sure that they're fully square um, and as you can see where I'm doing it, just to make sure that when it sits up against the point it sits nicely home. Um, using the round side we just need to clear out some of the resin from that curved area. If if you don't then when the, uh, the point tie bar moves it might hit it. If you're finding you're getting restriction you might just need to file that a little tiny bit further. So that should be all the filing done. We're now just going to using the very fine, or using the medium fine. We'll just give these a little, the uh, cranks just a little tickle on both sides, just to get rid of any burrs or anything uh, kind of alive. And then I'll just tickle around. There'll be a, a little bit of resin marks around the side. You don't need to do this, but I, I tend to just give them a little tickle just to tidy them up because you don't want any of it. If it happens to be a bit of flash on there, it might foul the mechanism and just make them make the motion not very good. Now we're switching over to the uh, the rougher paper and I'm going to try and I'm just first of all I think I'm just going to try and scratch in the direction that you would have the uh, wood grain go and you want to scratch the sides and you probably just want a little clean up on the bottom just to give yourself a key when you glue. So both the length, both the long sides are done lengthways, the short sides are done um, perpendicular to it to simulate the wood grain going up and down. As you can see there, I just want to make sure I get a bit of wood grain on there. You don't really need to do too much, just a bit of a scratch really and then the uh, when you paint it the um, uh, wash will go into it. So now we've moved to the top, again we do the top, we do the long lengths, uh, we sand it in the direction of the wood grain in the long length, we do the short lengths, we go perpendicular to the uh, length. Now I need to just try and encourage a little bit of wood grain effect in the top. We've got the planks in there but just sort of scratch in the direction of the planks which would be the direction the wood, wood, uh, wood grain would go. Um, you might want quite a sharp edge on your sandpaper. Really. I've got an old piece here but it's better with a sharp edge. You can get right in and it's up to you how long you spend on here. You could leave it um, if you want. I seem to have gone off the camera there. That's great. Um, all I'm doing is just trying to encourage a bit of a little bit of wood grain effect onto the uh, onto the top there, so you can see a little a little sharp edge there would make life a little bit easier just getting into that edge. And it's quite surprising how the um, how the paint, certainly if you use a thin wash, will will sit in there and give you a slightly woody effect. There we go, nothing too fancy. But you can see just just a scratch, just to try and give a wood grain effect. Next, we need to fit it to the point. So let's take a look at how to assemble them. So taking the base, let's place it up against the Pico point and make sure it's nice and snug and that the recesses fit around the sleepers. Now we'll take the pivot rod and we'll place it through the heel of the pivot. It should be reasonably uh, snug, you know, it sh you shouldn't need to force it but it should be able to go in okay. Now place the uh, pivot into the base, into the 2mm hole in the base and ensure that the pivot will, uh, uh, will move freely. Place the toe of the pivot over the spigot on the point tie bar, uh, blade tie bar and then just holding everything in place just make sure when you move the point that everything is nice and free. Now when we're going to locate that 2mm hole in the lid over the top of the little uh, pivot rod and 
the other two mill holes over the spigots in the base. Again, make sure the point operates nice and freely. If it doesn't, we need to make sure we need to go back and do some of the preparation operations again. Now, you'll you'll notice here that um, the spigot sticks up, and the spigot must not be any higher than the top of the uh, lever. If it is, you'll need to trim it down with a pair of side cutters or a file or, or something else. Um, but if it sticks up, it will foul the lid, and then the operation won't be of the lever won't be smooth. Um, I'm just going to grab a slightly brighter um, lever uh, wire here, just so you can see it a bit better. Now, to place it in, you need to place the point blades in the middle position and then with the uh, uh, points base up against the, the points you should the, the actual little wire lever should poke right down through the hole you'll feel when it wants to go in, don't try and force it and then you can just operate the point backwards and forwards and it should be nice and free if, it's, if it catches at all and is not perfectly free then you need to take it apart and probably re redo some of the preparation it might be a case that you need to open out the one mil hole a little bit more maybe do a bit of the overlizing like this so if you remember we uh, we sort of overlize the hole um, sort of like a zigzag pattern slightly um, just to make sure it's clear um, you might need to um, to put the one mil you know to, to sort of do a bit of reaming in the slot at the bottom so if you you know you can either use the uh, uh, junior hacksaw, or you can use a one mil, one mil drill. In this case, I'm using the uh, junior hacksaw just to just to make sure I've gone through far enough, and there isn't any uh, sort of casting still left in there. Just give it a bit of a tickle. You can go a little bit further than you need, but don't go too far. You might um, damage the integrity of the base. Ensure the base of the lever is level with the base of the track. You may need to use a little shim. And here you can see the levers in situ on my layout. The points themselves are controlled by rod and tube, and the point levers are controlled directly by the blade ties. So thank you for watching. I'm Dibley, this is Dibs Yard Shunting Layout, and this video has been to show you how I prepare and assemble my working point levers.